Slate magazine claimed in March 2018 that the University of Chicago's recent stance on free speech was little more than a marketing ploy to appeal to donors. This is a common claim of progressive critics of free speech on campus. Not surprisingly, the article also suggested that only progressives, not conservatives, are worthy of being invited to college campuses. But the issue of intellectual diversity aside, Slate ignores the facts and historical record on the University of Chicago's commitment to free speech, which goes back much further than the magazine stated. It's hardly recent. In 1899, newspapers reported that the University of Chicago trustees declared that, quote, free speech was the fundamental principle upon which the university was founded, end quote. This declaration came after two U Chicago faculty members were criticized for speaking out against U.S. expansion. One was German immigrant Herman Edward von Holst, the head of U Chicago's history department. He'd been attacked for his statements condemning slavery, which he saw as driving expansion. One critic in 1893 condemned von Holst for, quote, treating our constitutional history in its formative period down to 1828 in a single volume, giving six volumes chiefly to the history of slavery from 1828 to 1861 under the title Constitutional History of the United States, end quote. This protection of free speech by the University of Chicago trustees was not necessarily seen as a given by some. Just a few years earlier, in 1895, the media lambasted the university after Edward Bemis, a tenured associate professor, claimed he was fired or forced to resign for his criticism of Rockefeller and Standard Oil. One newspaper ran a satirical help wanted ad on behalf of the university, claiming it had an opening for a professor of monopoly economy, quote, who believes that trusts are always right, that labor unions are always wrong, that any method to crush a rival is right if successful, end quote. The university denied the allegations. So while free speech was a source of controversy at the University of Chicago in its first decade, it was professors speaking out against slavery and U.S. expansion that resulted in one of the university's strongest earliest statements in support of free speech. Those were what we would today call progressive, not conservative, causes.